Good evening, everyone. Let me know that you can hear me and see me. I can see the comments on YouTube. I'm going to double check on Facebook and make sure everything's coming through there. It looks like it's live. Hey, Jennifer. Thanks for joining. Hey, Wendy. Teresa. Awesome. You're so excited. <laughs> okay, well, hopefully I can live up to that. <laughs> All right. So, everybody doing okay? You can hear me okay? I think everything's on. I can hear you and see you. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Teresa, will you double check? Facebook may not be on yet. I'm a little bit early. I just, I'm trying to make sure I've got everything right. I can see it, um, but I'm just not sure that it's live yet. Hey, Susan. Hey, Angela. So I'm looking at two different screens. I'm actually looking at three different things, plus a tablet at the same time to double check uh, Facebook. So good evening, TJ. So let me know if anybody is on Facebook and they can see the live feed. Let me know. I'm going to go out here on my tablet and just double check. I don't think it's live yet because it'll automatically go live at 7:30. So I, uh, while I'm waiting on that, because I'm a couple of minutes early, um, is some things that you want to see in future lives. Let me know. You can put them in the chat there, um, or you can message me or email me, just so that um, I know what you guys are wanting. Whether it doesn't matter if it's clay or ceramic related or glass related, just whichever is your preference. Facebook, t okay, there's two posts, Teresa, on my page on Facebook. So go down to the first one. And uh, I, I don't think it will go live until, but I do see the video, which that's a good thing compared to the last couple of tries. So um, let me look at it one more time. It should go live right at 7.30. So we still got two minutes. So, but, uh, hey, Kathy, thanks for joining. So I've done this in a different live, but, um, I had a lot of technical issues. So I wanted to redo this so that it was a nice, uh, video for you guys. Okay. Thanks, Teresa, for checking for me. So anyway, so tonight, um, what I'm going to do is while I'm waiting on Facebook here for just a second, um, this is what we're going to do, except for it's on a bigger plate, and I've started a couple of areas. So this is an underglaze transfer. Some people call them a decal. Um, these were porcelain dishes uh, that I hand-built out of clay. So I have another hand-built piece that I'm going to be working on tonight. So when you're doing your clay, there's other videos out there. I'm not going to show you how to transfer um, the image, but these are from, uh, I think I put it in the description of the video on YouTube. Uh, Eden, Elden, uh, they're underglaze, just type in underglaze transfers and you'll be able to find different ones. Sandbow has them, uh, so there's different ones out there, okay? Okay, now, Teresa, it says it's live. Awesome, it worked! <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Hopefully it is. So somebody go check that for me. Um, Latrice, if you'll jump out there. It, it says it's live. Yeah, it did. Okay, so I'm going to switch back to this. So this is what we're doing tonight. We are doing color concentrates with underglaze transfers. Okay, so let me go back to me. Hi there. I'll say hi again since we are live on Facebook and YouTube. Yay, I did it. I can't believe it. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Uh, too many permissions and things to take care of. So good evening, everyone. Tonight we're going to do the underglaze transfer, how you can color on top of it using your color concentrates. And I'm going to show you some examples using color strokes, which is my opaque underglaze. Um, but I'm going to basically put the camera down and then start talking to you about some products and uh, give a minute for other people to join. Okay, so I'm going to go to my overhead camera. So 
these are ones that are finished okay so these are porcelain uh, this one I believe is B mix cone 5 cone 6 okay so I hand built the piece I transferred and this one that I'm going to work on tonight has texture around the border that was kind of a pain to do and then I transferred the underglaze transfer um, to the wet wear let it dry this fired it to 04 okay so this is stoneware you can do the same thing with earthenware also okay so um, don't think you have to do it on stoneware okay all right I'm trying to see the comments uh, over on Facebook give me one second I've got to make my screen I need three screens now instead of just two right <laughs> oh no that's not what i wanted to do okay i got it okay so on facebook hey deb linda jan nancy okay good renee hey miss renee and belinda welcome welcome okay so this one was a black like this one here okay this one was a blue transfer they come in different colors okay let me tilt that so you can see see the difference so you could do it with any color um, some of them have four or five different colors that you can choose that's just up to you okay so I've got the picture up there um, so that you can see the finished and, and the one I'm working on this is another one um, and I don't remember where this one is from if anybody knows you can pop it in the chat there Hey, Miss Ann. Hey, Laura. Thanks for joining. Okay, so we are live on both YouTube and Facebook. So this is another um, underglaze transfer. It was plain, just the lines. And then I came in and just used my sumi brushes and I sumi shaded light colors, dark colors, and then added some line work coming out. And I left some of these open, which I think is really cool. And you could do that with any design. You could color part of it, leave part of it um, uncolored if you wanted to do that. Now, I did these examples with the color concentrates, okay? The color concentrates, so this is our two ounce bottle size. Let me grab a one ounce so you can see it. Here's the one ounce size, okay? All right, so color concentrates are a translucent or transparent underglaze. So they are translucent, so whatever's underneath it as long as you don't put on too many coats, it's going to show through. Okay, so these are the ones that you want to use for the most part. Can you use the color strokes? Absolutely. But let me show you what happens. Um, and I did this plate on the other live that I did. See the skulls with the purples and how it kind of muted some of that black where it looks more gray? That's because that's an opaque underglaze. Now, this is not the same color, but these are your color strokes, okay? So, I only put one thin coat on there with the Sumi brush, and I still, it still kind of blacked out his eye compared to the blue. So, if you look at the blue one and you look at the uh, Orchid Bloom one, you can see the difference. It kind of just, but if you're okay with that, you could use either one if you have both products or thin it down slightly more. Um, I'm using pretty much the color concentrate straight out of the bottle. This is another transfer that I, it cam comes in different colors. I did the uh, green transfer and then I just came back with a thin coat of 160 Key Lime, CC 160, over the top of it just to add something to it so I didn't have white in the background because the clay is a white color. This is another underglaze transfer on this one. And I went back in. Do you see the little comma stroke? So I just added some of the concentrates as a stroke just to fill in some of the background. And add. you could do the edges. There's all different kinds of things you could do. And I think I put the color over the top of that little area there also. Hey, Mary, Jackie, welcome, welcome. Cheryl, uh, rested. No, I'm not really rested, but thank you. Um, yeah, I'm still exhausted. 
so you'll have to bear with me. <laughs> and then, you know, out of your scraps, so if you use all of your, your sheets of underglaze, uh, transfers come in a couple of different sizes, but if you've got extras left or you haven't cut it out particularly, so I had some excess, so I just did these little, I'm going to make these into magnets, so it's a way to use some of that without throwing away your money um, if you've got extra around the edge, okay? So hopefully that gives you some ideas. All right. All right. But I think this is really cool. So depending on the design, you know, leave some of it open, leave some of it, um, you know, with the color in it. Okay. So you can see that I've started this one. So what I want to do is um, tell you the colors that I have out. I think you can see my palette here. Um, I have CC 123 Sunflowers is my yellow one over here. I have CC 160, which is my lighter green. And I tend to do this. I do my palette from light to dark, and that way it helps me keep it straight. Just, it's a visual thing. And then CC 161 is the next darkest green. And then CC 162 is laurel green. That's the darkest one, very strong. Don't, you don't need a lot of it, okay? It goes, a lot goes a long ways. And then I've got my three blues, and you know me, I like my ceruleans. Um, these are terrible bottles and labels, but this is CC 150 is your light color. CC 151 is your medium value. And then CC 152 is your darkest. There again, you don't need very much of it. A little bit goes a long ways. Can these work also on glass is the question. Um, they can, yes, you can use the color concentrates on glass. Um, the problem is it's not going to hold on there unless you're doing the ink technique, JP, um, because the glass is vitreous already. There's nothing it can't absorb into it, whereas the clay, it can absorb into it. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. But next week, I'm going to show you the new technique that I released at Vegas Show, and I'm going to show you how to use your color concentrates and what you need to do to basically be able to do something similar to this. I'm going to show you that hydrangea technique. And hold on, I've got one here. I have way too many samples. Let me grab it. Okay, so see this one here? It's hard to see with the light. So I'm going to show you. This is a combination of color strokes, color concentrates. Um, it can be done with either one, and it can be done on glass. And it's a hydrangea. So that's next week. Be sure and tune in for that. Um, I'm going to give you some basic information, okay? Now, here is another underglaze decal. This has um, been bisfired. This was an actual earthenware piece that was cast, and I had it in a O10. Uh, it was a leftover retreat piece. So O10, when you fire uh, earthenware, just makes it white, makes it a little more durable, and so it absorbs instead of trying it on bis, which I didn't have the best luck with, um, the O10 is going to absorb. So I put the decal on there, and then I added the comma strokes just as an accent. So don't think you have to leave it just like it is, okay? Um, you could even stencil large letters uh, over the top, you know, with opaque colors. I mean, there's all different types of things you can do. All right, let me check. Looks like shiny ice or hail on the... Yeah, it's it's not. It's it's the difference in frit is what it is, Vicky. Okay, let me double check. I'm by myself tonight, so um, I'm gonna go back and forth. Hey, Lucy, thank you. Uh, we're not. We're just really starting. Okay, Vicky, Ginger, welcome. Okay, so the underglaze transfer was put on the bisque, and now and you have to be careful because if you sand this too much, you could bisque fire it, but you could still meaning go back to 04 again, but it can still uh, rub off if you put too much pressure or too much liquid on it, okay? So I'm going to be using the small Sumi brush for most of this. If I need a smaller one, we have the mini, and it's a little tiny one, so that's another one. Um, 
you could do background. I'll probably put some color on the edge of this, but we'll, we'll see what I end up with. Not tonight, probably. Okay, so always wet your brushes first. And then just, I don't know if you can see, I'm going to just blot a little bit of the moisture out so that it's not sopping wet, okay? And I'm going to do one of the leaves. So I'm going to start, and I'm going to put yellow at the tip for one of them. So I think I'll do this one here. So I'm going to tuck it in, sit it down, and just kind of pat, 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 and bring it down a little ways. So you can see, you can still see the underglaze transfer through that. Okay. With that color in the brush, I'm going to turn my piece, and that is a key. And I can't find my little Lazy Susan. I don't know what I did with it. I'm going to grab the 160 key line, and I'm going to start at the base Remember, you don't want to overwork. You just want to get the color on there. And what I'm doing is just adding a little bit at a time. And I'm coming back up to that yellow. And making sure that it overlaps the yellow. Okay. And let's zoom in while we're doing this. How about that? Oops, too much. Okay. Okay. So you can see that. Now I'm going to go to the 161, which is the next darkest green. And I'm going to overlap that and just add that on top of the other one. And bring it out as far as I want. So what we're doing is creating two, three, and four color blends. Okay, I'm going to show you how to fix that. See how I went outside my line? Okay. And now I'm going to grab a little tiny bit, itty, itty bit of that dark green. And I'm going to add it down there and come up the sides a little bit. So I'm always aiming my brush where I want the color. Okay. You wouldn't, if you went like this and tried to add your dark color, you're going to see a dark line. It's not going to be a gradual transition from one to the other. Hopefully that makes sense. Does that make sense, guys? Let me know in the chat. Hey, Miss Cindy, how are you? The CCs are straight out of the bottle, Deb. Yes, the question was, are the color concentrates straight out of the bottle? They are. Straight out of the bottle. No, no water. Everything is just straight out of the bottle. Okay, so if I want a vein, okay, so you can see, well, you can see it on the photograph there too. That's why I put that on there, so I didn't have to keep doing that. So I'm going to water load, and I'm going to drag off the side of my bowl to remove most of the water. Okay, that's why I have that in the view. I'm going to tip it into the dark green, itty bitty bit. You can hardly see it on there. And now I'm going to do what I call a tuck and slide. So I'm going to tuck the color where I want it, which is down here, and just slide it along that vein. Rinse. And if I need to blot, I can come back and blot. See that? Tuck and slide. Yes, Sylvia, it, it's available on YouTube. It, everything is being recorded. So yes, you can come back and view it and do start and stop, follow along. That works. Now, if you want some of the blue color in the flowers onto your leaf, you would do the same thing. Water load, drag off to a point. And I'm going to tip into the 151 Cerulean. And maybe I want that color right here. I just want a little hint of it. It's like it's being cast over from the flowers. Okay. Now, remember I said I got outside the line here. You can see it's outside. So I'm going to just take a clean brush and push it back. Kind of shimmy it back and forth and push it back into where it needs to be. If I have anything that... I just can't stand. Okay, so that's how you would correct it. Because it is um, in that gel base, it allows you to manipulate and move it around. Okay, well, hi, Miss Joanne. How are you? <laughs> uh, okay, all right, so let's do another one. So that one I started with yellow. Let's start with, I'm going to water load, drag off. I'm going to blot to get rid of some of the water, but I want a little bit. And then I'm loading with the green, the 160. And I'm going to start that at the tip. And some of the tips are really tiny, so you have to kind of paint them in. 
and I'm going to come halfway back is a good rule of thumb. Okay, so I'm halfway. I'm going to turn it around because I always want to aim. So I'm going to tip into the 161 now. And I'm going to start it where it's darker, which would be at the stem. Sit it down, sit it down. Mush, mush, mush. Walk it to the right, walk it to the left. Bring it up and overlap it into that other color so that you have a nice transition from one to the other. And that looks good, but there's more you can do. So now I'm going to tip into the darker green just a tiny bit like we did before. Tuck that in at the base and sit it down, sit it down, mush, mush, mush. And see how I started? I started in the middle where the stem was and I worked to the right and worked to the left. And if you want one side like this one that's going in towards the center to be a little darker down this side, did you see how I turned my piece? That's key. Don't work at it like this because you're going to have a line of green. You need to go like this because what's happening is you have the other green inside the bristles of the brush, the darker green on the tip. So when you set it down, you're actually seeing all of those colors. So there's not as much in here, but you can kind of see how it's got the light green and the dark green. Okay. So you want to have the first color in there. Hey, Miss Ann. I missed it. Did you put the transfer on bisque? Okay, so Deb, what I did was when I made the platter out of, uh, I believe this one is B-Mix, uh, when I made this, I put the underglaze transfer, I fired it, so I put it on the wet clay, fired it to 04, which is what I'm working on now. You still need to be careful not to overwork the decal because it could still come off uh, or move around if you uh, get really messy. Ginger has a question for later since you missed the very beginning. Is that a stencil or bisque? So this is an underglaze transfer. So Ginger, think of like a decal we use on glass or on ceramics, but this is an underglaze transfer. Some people refer to it as underglaze decal. Um, in the YouTube description, I did put the link to where I got this particular one. Okay, so you can find that there. Hey, Eddie, Murray, thanks for joining. Back from Florida, Wisconsin. It's still <laughs> snow-covered, Nancy says. Yeah, well, it's it's been a little bit cooler here also. But that's okay. I like it cooler. All right, so if you get out, you can just take a damp brush and just kind of push and shimmy it back to where it goes. I'm going to blot, get some water, and just double-check this one. Okay. So maybe I don't want any blue on that one. I only want the blue. So you could go back and add. So let's do another one here. So we're going to start with, um, I, I already have moisture in my brush. I'm going to grab, and if you ever, if you have a huge leaf and you can't do the whole thing, do half of it and then do the other half. That's a really good way to do it. Um, if you run out of whatever the first color or the last color that you're trying to blend into, just add a little bit of that color back in your brush before you go into the second color. So I grabbed more of the key lime, the 160, halfway to three fourths of the way down, turn the piece, pick up. So I did not rinse my brush. I picked up 161 uh, green leaf and I'm starting it at the base. So I start in the middle of the area. And the reason that I, and I just turned my brush over to get the color off the other side. So the reason I do that is because if you start over on one side and go to the other side, okay, so if you start over here and go over to the other side of the leaf, all of your color is put down here. Time you get to the other side, you don't have anything left. So if you start in the middle and work right to left and left to right, then you will disperse that color evenly in that area. Okay, Karen. Yeah, you'll, yeah. everything's on YouTube, a recording, and on Facebook. Yeah, this is a beautiful transfer. Uh, like I said, it comes in the, the blue or the black. Okay. See those two? I know the picture's there, but it's hard to see it. So this one over here is the blue one. And then you got the black one. I think there may be other colors. I don't remember. Um, I've had this one for quite a while. And... You know, the story is keep them in a cool, dry place because they are made of underglazes. 
um, don't buy them until you're ready to, to use them, I would say. Um, just because they can get brittle. I had one that didn't transfer very well. So now that I've sat here and talked, I'm going to add a little bit of that color that I just put down, the 161, and then tip into the 162 because I want that first color or the last color that I used still on the brush so that it blends nicely. And I'm going to have my darker side toward the center of this plate so I can come down. See how I turned my brush? And then you can kind of drag it along that side if you want. All right. Hi, Natalie. This is your favorite. I know this is my favorite too. <laughs> um, I want to try different colors, but I know that this one works really well. Okay, so let's do another one. My brush is damp. I'm going to grab the 160. And I'm going to come over here. And you can't get in that tip, so start down where it's a little bit larger, get some of the product off of your brush, then go back in and taper in that tip. Okay. Halfway down, three-fourths of the way, turn your piece. That is key. Turn the piece because you want to aim the brush. So now I have light green on the brush and a medium green. And when I set that down right in the middle, then I can walk to the left walk to the right. I'm turning my brush over to get the color off the other side and I'm bringing it up or I call walking it back down the leaf so it blends into that other and I can add a little bit on that stem. Then I'm going to grab, I know I've got enough product on the brush, I'm going to grab a tiny tiny bit of that dark green. Again I started in the middle, walk it to the right, walk it to the left and then I'm going to touch into that little stem. Okay. And I'm going to stop right there. Now, if you wanted blue on this one, maybe over on this side where it's aiming where the flower is going to be, rinse your brush, and then I still have water in it. You can blot it just a little bit, tip into the 151, and I'm going to tuck it in right here at the side and just kind of walk it back and forth. But again, I started in the middle, and I'm going both directions to disperse that color evenly across the piece. Okay. Hey Gilbert, thank you. You had some too, Lucy, that hadn't, uh, won't transfer. Yeah, I, I think it's because of, um, they're older. So cool, damp, don't, um, you know, have the sun beaming through the window would be my recommendation uh, on it. Okay, now I'm going to do this one here. So my brush still has moisture in it, but I did blot it. I grabbed the key lime and we're going to bring it down about halfway to three-fourths, turn the piece around, grab the 161, which is your medium value, green leaf, and start down there at the bottom in the middle, and then work it up, and then grab your 162, the darker green. Don't need very much. See that? Itty, itty bit. Just barely, barely on there. Okay, and just work it back and forth. Now, I want to make sure that, because this leaf is underneath here, so I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to add a little bit more of that dark color while it's in my brush, because I want that to look like it's definitely behind. Okay, and then if I want, I can do that tuck and slide. Now, if you find that maybe when you do the tuck and slide to do the center vein, that it's not working for you, what I would do is put, I'm going to do one that way. I'm going to put the 161 in the brush, but not sopping wet with it. It's in there. And then I'm going to tip into the 162, just a tiny, tiny bit on there. And let's do... You got to determine which side. So I said my inside was going to be my darker, so I need this here. So I'm going to tuck it, pat it in, and then pull it down. And I, I'm going to add just a smidge more. And I'm going to tuck it in and pull it down. And then I can do this one. I'm going to add some of that 
medium green, barely in the dark, tuck it, tap, 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 press, and slide. And I'm just going to thin that out on the end. All I did was clean my brush and just go back over it. Hopefully you can see that. All right. Do I ever water the colors down? It doesn't look like these are. These are straight from the bottle, Natalie. Um, yes, I, I do thin them down if, um, you know, Jessica did uh, her new Peace Love Rainbow cup and she thinned them down and flooded them in the texture okay so if i had something that was a really really deep texture this one isn't a particular one but if i wanted it only on a certain area then i would thin it and flood it in okay um let me see if i have a piece i don't think i do for the most part i do them full strength and then so like even on this piece, this was put on full strength, white back with the concentrates, cranberry, um, aqua splash, and 137, I believe is that one. Wiped it back and then a zinc free clear. Is the first layer dry now that you've been, yes, it is, yeah, it's not glossy. So if it's not glossy uh, to the camera, then yes, it's dry, dry enough. Now, you could still move it, okay, but it is dry enough. You can see that if I tilt this, nothing appears to be wet looking. Good question, though. Okay, so let me check the other questions. Um, do you have to work wet on wet and apply one color and then go up? Yeah, so you noticed I did everything on one leaf, okay? So that's what you need to do. Light, medium, dark. Don't go do all the lights on all your leaves and all the medium. No, you have to go wet on wet. That is a great question. So you would do it exactly as I'm showing you. And that's the best results. Hey, Miss Lucy. When this is fired, is the black comes through? Yes, it does, Cindy. Okay. So like the photograph on my left over here, right there. Okay. So this was the same black transfer as this one. And I'm doing the same application and it does come through. Sorry, I need to tilt that. So yes, it does. Are you only using the tip of the brush to tuck and slide? Yes. Let me do another leaf and then I will uh, turn on the side camera for you. Or actually, I can do that right now. Let's see. Let's do the side camera and the overhead. So now you can see me over here on the side. Okay, so I'm going to wet my brush. I'm going to blot it on the paper towel. I'm going to pick up the 160 and let me find another leaf. We can do this one here. Okay, so I'm kind of at an angle with my brush where I can press down and fill in that area. See how I'm going back and forth over it a couple of times. So technically, do you see how that is wet looking there? Whoever that was that asked me. Um, Vicky, so see how that one looks wet in the camera and this one's dry so yes so then turn around and i'm going to set it down to do this so the side camera i'm going to pick up the green leaf which is the 161 and i'm going to start down at the base and this is kind of hidden in behind the petals there's quite a bit of it down here okay so i'm still going to have that in my brush i'm going to grab a little bit more you see how much of the brush is the pressure? Does that help? I'm trying to remember you watered them down. No, usually I don't water them down unless I'm doing a watercolor effect, Deb. I pretty much use them full strength with the exception. The darker greens, some of the darker blues, the 140, one, if they're a little thick, then I will add maybe one dot of water to it. Okay. So let's do, let's do this. Let's go completely side camera so you can see the difference. Okay, so I am here, and do you see how the bristles are bending? They're all the way down. So I'm just pat, 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 pat. So I've got color still left in my brush, but I am going to grab a little bit more because I was talking and it kind of dried out. 
I'm going to grab a tiny, tiny bit of the dark green. Can you see that? Okay, that's an awful picture of my hand. And then I'm going to tap it in, tuck it in at the base where it goes. And then I'm going to have to go in here and kind of just walk it down so that it gets into that darker and smaller area. Now, you've got a flower, a blossom over here, so you can come up and around. But do you see how I'm aiming the brush towards that? So I'm aiming that brush against that. Okay. Yeah, so I mainly just put everything um, full strength for the most part. Yeah, thank you, Lucy, for mentioning that. On If you're on YouTube um, or on Facebook, like, uh, do the thumbs up. Um, like, share, comment. Um, you never know when I'm going to give away a prize. Okay. And if you hit the like button, it shows YouTube that you like me and that allows me to keep doing these free videos for you. Okay. So you can see that that's already dry. It's not wet. So I can go ahead and do my tuck and slide. Okay. So I'm going to wet the brush, drag off the excess. I'm also going to, I'm going to grab a paper towel so you can see, I'm just going to blot Oops, sorry. Just blot out the excess moisture, and then I'm going to grab a tiny, tiny bit of the dark green. Okay, and I'm going to tuck that in. I really don't need it down here because it's already so dark. And then just pull it down. And I feel like I got rid of too much of my water. And the reason I'm blotting some of this off is because I don't want it to smear the transfer. So does that help showing you the side view? What is the name of my channel on YouTube? I will show you that, Sylvia. Yeah, be sure and subscribe if you're not. Okay, real quick, we'll do this. So here's my channel. So if you just search on Paula McCoy, you'll see the Colors for Earth logo. And then you can subscribe to my channel. Okay. Um, All right, let's go back to the overhead. Did that help showing you the side view? I'm using the tip. So, Wendy, did that help showing you that view? Hopefully. I'm going to do another yellow one now. So, if you weren't here in the very beginning. So, I'm going to use uh, water load, blot off the moisture. I'm going to grab and get that 123 uh, sunflowers for the yellow. And I had it in my mind where I was going to go. So, I'm going to do this one here. So, tuck it in. Always keep that brush aimed where you want that color to go. Okay, so this leaf goes all the way down to here. So now I'm going to turn that around. Yes, Susan, I did do some major driving. Um, I had, uh, had to take my mom home. So now I have the key lime. And my dad... Um, We've had some injuries in the family, my dad, my sister, and so I was trying to help out with what I could, but it was a, that was the quickest trip I've ever made, and I'm still not recovered from it. <laughs> okay, so, yes, it did, Wendy. Okay, awesome. So, that was 160. Now, I'm going into the one, so we've got pretty much halfway with the yellow, halfway with the 160. Now, I'm tipping into 161, and I'm going over the top of that 160. And I'm going to show you how to get it off the flower petals here in just a second. Okay. And then I'm going to add a tiny, tiny bit, maybe a hair more, of the 62 at the base. But always aim that brush where you want it. And then I want some of that to come up and under those petals also. Okay. But you can see when it's wet, you see that shimmer on it. When it's dry... It starts, so this was the first one I did, and it's starting to get chalky. So that shows you that it's drying. And you, you would think that you won't, uh, you would think you wouldn't be able to see the decal after it's fired, but you can. And you can see, I did the same technique on that one there. So really, because I'm layering colors on top of colors, you only need the one coat. 
okay which is really nice because you're getting almost two coats on those areas where they're darker for sure okay so my brush is still wet i'm going to grab the darker green and i'm going to go over here where that vein is and do that tuck and slide if i don't like the way it looks i can just come back with a damp brush and water and soften that look with a clean brush and let me show you i usually oh i've got my brushes in there um i usually have a clean and a dirty so in my water bowl i have clean over here dirty here so when i'm getting ready to clean off an area i'm going to use the clean water hopefully because you you just have so much stuff in there you're just transferring it whether you believe it or not so now i've got a clean brush and water and i'm just pushing that color back where it goes Okay, so I can do the same thing here if I think it's over. I'm not going to worry about it right now. Okay, and I've got another one here that I need to do a tuck and slide. So I'm going to water load, blot off a little bit of that moisture because I don't want it to, um, i got to get my right side going. And I'm going to tuck it in. Look at the position of my brush. I'm not like this. I'm tucking it where I want it, pat it in place, and then slide. Isn't that pretty? okay let me check comments thank you lucy i'm sorry yeah angela yes they uh, it's it's an underglaze transfer and it was put on the damp clay when i made this piece this is a hand-built piece okay and i put it on and then i bis fired it to 04 and at the top of my screen there it tells you that i'm working on an 04 stoneware bisque You like how the colors blend, Kimberly says. Thank you. Yeah, they because of that gel base, um, and because, and then Vicky's saying 3D, because of where you put your shadows, you know, and if you're, if you're not good at that, or let's say that you just don't feel comfortable doing it, um, I'd be happy to help you. I mean, I can look at a picture. You can Facebook me or email me, and I'd be happy to help. But you, you've got to, if you put your thumb down, I think this is the best way I've described it in, for many, many years. If you put your thumb on that leaf, this one's underneath. So you need to add shadow. So whichever one you think is on top, and I don't, well, there's two partials over here. So this one is on top. So this one's going to be mostly dark right there. So let's do that one so that you can see that. And I think I want to do some yellow on that one. Just because I'm trying to break up the leaves and get them different colors. Oh my goodness, look what I did. Oh no, it's ruined. Not. I'm going to grab a sponge. My clean water. This is the nice thing. Because they're in a gel base. Looky there, completely off. Okay, so Paula, see, I do make mistakes. I just don't show them to you. <laughs> All right, so put that yellow in there. Kind of got to snug it in because it is against your. It's an edge there. Turn it around. Grab your key lime. I'm leaving the yellow in the brush because I want this to blend into that yellow. I'm going to add that to the stem area, tuck it in, and I want to bring it up a little bit further. You see that? Now I'm going to grab the 161, start at the same area. So you're adding a second coat on that, and that gives you the depth. And I'm going to also bring it down that side. See how I did that? So I brought it down the side a little bit. Am I going to paint the outside, Vicki? Yes, I am. Yeah, I'll antique it. Um, what I may do is, just to be safe, <laughs> um, I will probably O4 this again so that the color is set. And then I can put uh, wax, you know, inside for about three quarters of an inch or so. And then I'll just do a white back antiquing on the edge. I don't know what color yet. Okay. Okay, 
Okay, good, Angela. Make sure everybody's questions. All right, so then I'm going to grab uh, the 161, which I think I already did, but we'll add some more. And then the 162 is dark. So work from light to dark is my preference. Doesn't mean you have to, but it's always easier to add than to take away. Uh, and that applies to any uh, painting uh, in the glass or in the ceramic. That's what I've taught for, I don't know, 35 years or so. Okay, so I'm just taking a damp brush that's clean and I'm just kind of softening that. Okay. But that makes, that way you've got some different ones. And if you say, oh, you know what? I want to add some blue on this guy. If I did, I would add it to the light side. So I'm going to go into my clean water and then I'll show you here. I drag it off to a point to remove the excess and I'm going to tip into the um, 151 Cerulean. I'm making sure nothing's on my finger. And I'm going to just start in the middle of where I think I want that. And it's almost like a tuck and slide, but you kind of tap it in. So I'm just barely touching that surface. Okay, but you can do a tuck and slide if you want. All right. Nancy says I make it look so easy. It, it does take practice, but remember, I've been practicing for uh, probably 40 years. Is the transfer fired on? Jennifer asks. Yes, the transfer is fired. It was on my um, greenware that I rolled out with my slab table and uh, did my texture, and then I put the decal on there and fired it to 04. Okay. All right, so let's go back to... Um, the 160, which I need to get some more of. And the reason I do something with the same thing over and over, because that's how we learn. You see it um, done multiple times. It finally, like, oh, that's what she meant. Yeah, okay, Christina says <laughs> hair color, same thing, from light to dark, yeah. Okay, Jennifer, yeah, it's everything is fired, the, the decal or the underglaze transfer, as it's referred to on the market, is fired on. All right, so I'm going to go to, which one? This one. And I'm going to start, so I wet my brush, I blotted off the moisture, and I'm in 160 Key Lime, and I'm going to tuck this in very carefully up there at the top of that leaf. And then I'm going to turn it around. That is your key. And if you send me a picture and say, what did I do wrong? It doesn't look blended. I will be able to tell you that you did not turn your piece. Trust me, it's happened more than once. Sit it down, sit it down, mush, mush, mush. Walk it to the left, walk it to the right. Bring it back up into that color. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit more of it. Don't overwork. So if you're coming in late, don't sit here and putz too much with this because you can overwork, even though that de the underglaze transfer is fired on, it could smear on you. And I'm going to bring some down that edge. Okay, so I'm going to rinse in my clean water. And because I got up here on that edge, I'm going to just take the clean water in the brush and swish it back and forth and push it until it to get back inside the fence, basically. I'm going to do that over here on this yellow also. I'm just going to make sure it's not up on that edge. Isn't that pretty already? What is the home tint at home? I'm not sure what you're asking, Christina. Can you explain that for me? Oh, you're talking about the colored hair. I bet that's what it is. Okay, got it. All right, so let's do um, a yellow one over here. So the brush is damp, but I blotted it on the paper towel. And if you hear me say that enough, maybe that will uh, sink in. I'm going to put a little bit more moisture. I noticed it was dragging. It was dry. Okay, I'm going to wipe some of that out on my palette so I don't waste it. Turn around. Remember to turn. Now... I'm going to go ahead and put the 160, even though we really don't see that much of it. And then I'm going to go to the 161. 
starting in the middle, walk it to the right, walk it to the left, and then we could come down one side. So see, I'm turning my work as I'm coming around. And I'll add just a tiny, tiny bit of that dark color, just because technically we're going to say that this underglaze transfer is under the textured edge that I have. So there would be a little bit of a shadow there. Okay, I see an area that I don't like. I'm going to rinse in my clean water blot. I don't like this tuck and slide here, so I'm going to go back and just soften that. I just barely touched that. Just barely. Now here is a leaf with a turn back. So you can see you've got this part and then this is folded back. So I'm going to start and I'm going to put I'm going to put the key lime all over that to start with on the fold back and the other part and then I'm going to the 161 green leaf tuck it where it's darker and I'm coming all the way up and I'm, I'm going to actually turn this around and aim it this way also I'm also going to add more of that 161 right here at the back where that would be a little bit darker because remember it's going to be lighter at the tip so even though the it's the back of it it would still need that and then let's just put a itty bitty bitty bit of the dark just barely on that and then more of the dark I'm going to go down here against this guy because that bigger leaf up above it it's on top but because that turn back is folded over you also need some underneath that to show that fold so I went and got I think that's a little too much wipe a little bit off so I'm going to tuck it in and I'm just barely touching with the brush just enough that I can when I pat it down it blends but now you can see that that's folded. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some blue on there because I think it needs a little more definition. So I went into my clean water. I didn't want my green. Water load. Blot on my paper towel. Tuck, and I am using the small sumi still. And I'm going to tuck that in just right there just so that it makes it... Let me turn it around. I'm not sure that you can see that blue very much but there is blue on that edge okay hey Sharon thanks for joining so um, are you right that I do not brush the color on but it should be padded correct I'm padding the color so let's go back to um, the side camera I lost my side camera. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, so let's go back over here. And let me find another leaf. Okay, so I've got one up here, a partial. Okay, I'm going to grab my key line. Okay, so watch the angle of the brush. So I'm touching it down. Pat, 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 pat. You see that? It's pretty much all the bristle is down. Okay. And then you're going to turn it. You've got to turn it to get the angle. Okay, so I'm, I'm over here. I don't know that I can hold that. And now nah, my arm gets in the way. 61 is your next color. Okay, so tuck it in where it's darker, which would be at the stem where it grows from. I'm going to bring it up that side a little bit. Whoops, I got all my blue. And I'm also going to go underneath that. And then I'm going to grab the dark. Start in the middle. Pat, pat, pat. Now, can you brush it? You can. I just feel that you get a better blend, especially with my Sumi brushes, if you do this technique. You'll get a nice gradual transition from one color to the other. 
and you're going to say, what's so special about my Sumi brushes? Hi, Pat. Thanks for joining, or Pat's Pot page for joining. Hopefully your name is Pat. Sorry if, if I'm saying that wrong. Um, so my Sumi brushes are a black squirrel. And since we're on the side camera, I'll show you that. It's a black squirrel hair. It's a natural hair, so it's going to hold a lot of water, a lot of moisture or product, kind of like the hair on your head. So the Sumi brushes that are out there in the craft stores and maybe at the pottery stores that are the bamboo handle and the really long hairs, you know, they come out to like an inch or so. Um, it's harder to control those, I think. Now, these come to a point when they're wet, so they're good for flooding color in too. But um, you just, those brushes, I'm going to go back to my overhead. Um, those brushes are made of ponytail and it's a coarser hair, so it does make a little bit of a difference in the application. Um, and if you take care of these brushes, it's um, it'll last you forever. I mean, the more you use them on bisque, of course, uh, they're going to be harsher, but you can use them on greenware also, uh, earthenware or your mid-range clay. How would you draw the stem on the folded leaf? Well, it's not it's not showing. Uh, or do you mean the center vein, maybe? Kimberly says my brushes are the bomb. <laughs> they, I, I designed these, um, let's see, my oldest son is 36, so about 30 years ago. So it makes a huge, huge difference. I mean, I, I just can't, I'm not just trying to sell you a brush. I, I do 85% of my ceramic painting with these brushes. And you can buy the set or you can buy um, them individually. They come in four different sizes. So here's your, let me move them over here. So you've got large, medium, small, and mini. Okay. So they are pretty nice. They used to say Paula McCoy, if you have any of those, uh, which this one still does. Uh, they're... Uh, keepsakes. Now they say colors for earth because I had them before I bought the company. All right. So I'm going to do that stem. Maybe that's what you were asking about, uh, Pat. So I'm going to water load, drag off to a point and I'll tuck it into the 162 and tuck and slide. And then if you want, I'm going to blot a little bit of that out. If you wanted it here would be on the backside of that folded one. Maybe that answers your question. Yes, it's Pat. Okay, good. So you had him when you were 10. Ha <laughs> ha, thank you. Yeah, not. No. I have a birthday, a big birthday coming up this uh, in July. <laughs> thank you, though. Yeah, I was 10. All right, let's work on some petals. Um, and then I'll go back and show you some stems. So I've got, once again, let's go over... I've got 150, 151, and 152, all of the ceruleans, which are my favorite colors, if you guys haven't uh, figured that out by now. So I'm, I'm going to water load. I'm going to blot. I'm going to start by tucking into the light color, and the lighter color would be on the outer edge, and I'm going to sit it down, sit it down, mush, 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 walk it to the right, and walk it to the left. So I'm just adding a little bit of color, and I'm going to zoom in a smidge. Let's see if I can do a smidge. Now, this color's been sitting here for a while, so all I'm going to do is just get it. A lot of times I will keep a sponge in the middle of my palette for that very reason. And the reason I use the handle of the brush is because there's less waste than there is if you use the hairs. Because then you got to rinse it out in the water and you've just wasted your product. We don't want to waste our product. Water load, drag off tip into that lighter blue and I'm just going to add a little bit more and for each petal I'm going to go through and add a little bit more on my brush so I've just got a tiny tiny bit on there and just pick out some so this is there's some of them uh, have three and four petals to that individual flower within the hydrangea so I'm always turning do you see that always turning I want to aim that brush where I want the color. Okay, so maybe we've got one over here that has light. So you can make them different colors 
but still in the same color family. Uh, and you could add, you know, you could always add some green to some. If you wanted them left white, you would just leave, um, you could add white, but I would just leave the background is what I would do, and then just add some color in the middle. So if I wanted a white bunch, I would just add maybe a hint of yellow or green in the center. Constantly wash your brush, drag off the excess, tip into the color, and let's do this one here. Now, as we get to the smaller ones, we can move to the mini. It's really tiny. See the difference in them? Because then I can tuck that in. Where did I go? Mm, too much on that brush. Tuck it in. And I shouldn't do that. I should have turned my piece. Do as I say, not as I do. Because most people won't get it. Um, you'll end up seeing lines of color as opposed to a blend. And same thing here. It's I've got water in the brush. Let's go to um, the paper towel. So I've got water in the brush and I'm tipping into that color. And when I set that color down, do you see you only get blue on the tip. So whatever is on the brush. So in the greens, I have the lighter green there and then the darker green. So the same thing happens here. If I want it left open and just light on the tips because I'm going to come back and put dark on the other areas, then that's why I do that. Water load, blot to remove some of the excess. You can add, I got too much water, I'm going to blot again. And the way I knew that I had too much water is I couldn't see any color. Couldn't see the color come off. It just wouldn't, wouldn't come off of there at all. Okay, so um, I'm going to rinse that off. Let's check for questions real quick. After you use her brushes, you will buy them. <laughs> Thank you, Ann. Miss Ann has been painting with my brushes for probably 20 plus years, I would say. She does a lot of uh, earthenware. And Deb says I have a great quality. And uh, yeah, you, you get what you pay for, guys. I mean, that's just, that's with shoes, your haircut, whatever you're doing. You get what you pay for. So, and these last forever. I mean, I can tell you that I have some that I still use that I've been using, I will show you one. This is one of mine. Now, the hairs are worn on the sides because I've used them so much on this, but I can still use this for a watercolor background. It's not going to hurt anything. So you just, a different use for them. All right, so water load, drag off, blot a little bit, go into the 151, which is the darker or the, the cerulean versus the light cerulean. And we're just going to turn it and tuck it in, add a little bit to my brush. See how you constantly turn and add that color there. Okay. All of a sudden I look not as light. I think it just because it got darker outside. Okay. And I am going to let some of this dry. So I'm going to work on a few of these at a time and then I'll come back and add a darker color so same thing here we've got 151 is what I'm using now water is in the brush if you wanted you could have the blue the lighter cerulean left in your brush and do this either way well just I, I caution you don't get too heavy or you could um, not see as much of your underglaze transfer okay the heavier you get especially the darker the color Okay, so tuck it in. I'm going to go ahead and come over here and tuck. And there. Doesn't take much on the brush. Too much. And you'll be able to tell when you set it down. But start little, and then you can always add more. Remember, it's easier to add than it is to take away. And especially on these, because you would be wiping off some of your transfer okay and then you can come back and add the deep cerulean some of them you may not want to but I just tipped into it I did not rinse my brush just tip in there and tuck that in right on top of the other one so every time you layer a color 
you intensify and darken whatever is there. Okay, constantly turning. All right. See that? Now this one I did all three colors. It's already dry, but that was when I started. That was before I started, okay? So keep that in mind. So it turns like a little chalky. So if you only wanted the bigger ones to have the dark, then just do the bigger ones. But you could do different. So let's say maybe I wanted some of these smaller ones inside here. I'm going to water load, drag off, and I'm going to get some key lime. Because maybe I want, let me find some tiny ones, some itty bitty ones like in the background maybe that are just white and green. I've got too much water blocked. And so I could tuck it in and just do some of the green like way back in the background trying to find another one. And you could still have the blues. So let's go over here and see if I can. Maybe I wanted some green on this one. Maybe a little bit on this one. So they're just not as mature as the other and you could even tip into your yellow and add a little bit of yellow on that it's hard to find the different ones underneath but you can you know come back and do that so they're white with a little bit of yellow then if you wanted you could still have that green and you could use the lighter blue the 150 and you could come in and do a little bit of blue on it so it's like they have a tinge of that color so be creative with it maybe a little bit here so you kind of get the idea hopefully all right let's check for questions keep that granddaughter in training <laughs> yeah well she's in the band right now the 13 year old so we'll see how that goes it would be nice if some of the family since it is a family business um, after you fired a cone four, Vicki says, can you add more color? Absolutely. Absolutely. So if I took this and I was done painting, I could fire it to 04 again and then come back and add more on top. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you thought it needed it. Absolutely. Now I'm going to go to the mini or you could bring out your liner and I want to just show you what I'm going to do. I always wet your brush. Um, I want the 161. So I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to block in or paint in. So this is whoever was asking me about do I always. So now I'm going to paint. Because the stems are so fine that it would be hard to do them with the sumi. But I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. So this is the stem going up into that blossom. I'm using the 161. Now I'm just up on the tippy toes, so I'm just getting the fine point. You could use the liner, the 3600 uh, liner brush also. Uh, that's a leaf. Okay. And then while I've got the 161 in my brush, I can grab the 162 because I have that right here at that center where that leaf was. And I can just gently kind of blend that in there. Kind of stroke it coming up from that okay so I left it lighter up here where it's going into the blossoms and it's darker more down towards the bottom or where it's going into that leaf I'm going to grab just a little bit more of that dark okay any other questions oops I got the time wrong Brit oh no I had to get a drink of water I've got to go. I'll be... Okay. Thank you, Pat, for joining. It'll be there. You can watch it anytime. Stop and start. Okay. So, let's go back and do... Um, you want to do another stem? Let's do... Let's do these over here. So, 161, the middle green. I haven't even looked at the time. So, we've been going an hour. So, put that lighter green. Remember, I told you to start from light to dark. Because you can always add more harder to take away 
So I'm just blocking that in very thin, very, remember these are translucent or transparent underglazes. Okay. So very, very thin. Grabbing a little bit. I put more of that green in my brush. Now I'm grabbing the darker green, the 162. And I'm just kind of letting it flow. And I'm just kind of lifting it off so that it's, excuse me, not completely up there. So it gets lighter as it gets towards um, the flower. Okay. Yeah, it's hard to remember all the time changes. Just remember, I'm always central time, okay? Central time. All right. So I'm going to add over here. And I'm not going to do the whole thing on a live, guys. So, uh, but I just wanted to make sure that you saw the same, you know, the stems, the leaves, the petals a couple of times to make sure you understood what I was doing. So this is just the mini sumi. Okay, I'm going to wipe off that dark and I might as well go ahead and go over here and do this one. And you could use whatever colors you wanted. You could do multicolors um, even on one piece. I might try that. I don't know. Um, I did want to mention that um, I am liking, hold on, let me grab it, I think this is it, yeah, the Mako Zinc Free SW004, that has been the best to keep the greens uh, from fading out. Um, I did do, uh, you know, in the beginning, the HF9 which is okay, but it tend, um, this, the Mako one tends to hold, and let me, let me just pop up the color wheels so you can see those, hold on, okay, so that is, the left one is Mako Stoneware Plate, it's like a coupe plate, so it was bisque, and I applied one, two, three coats with this number six square shader on both of these, uh, excuse me, on the left one, and then I applied two coats of their SW004 over it. And you can see even the purples up at the top is the 135, 136, 137. Kind of goes away a little bit. But even the pinks hold, the 30 and 31. And then on the right is your color strokes. Remember, those are the opaque ones. So there's 41 of the color concentrates. There's 62 of the color strokes. And that's done with the number four square shader. Same thing, one, two, and three coats. On Mako's Bisque, Zinc Free, the SW004 on it, and fired to cone uh, 2167. Okay. All right, so let's go back to overhead. Yay, my cameras are working and everything. It's a good night. I can't believe it. <laughs> I'm so happy. All right, so here's another little stem over here. I'm just going to go ahead and block these in. I'm going to leave this one light because um, you don't see, you know, the the real stem stem of it. So I think that's all of them. All right. Any questions up to this point as far as... So I will probably fire this again to 04, and then I'll come back and... Um, I will mask off a little bit in the middle so that when I do my white backs on the edge, or I could take and I could just kind of do, I'm not going to do it right now, but I'll let you know what I do. Okay. All right. Anybody got any last questions on YouTube or Facebook? I'll wait just a minute because there is a delay. I'm going to go ahead and load and... I'm going to do the 151 on the outer, let's go over here and do it, so that it's a little bit darker as opposed to the lighter blue. Remember I used the 150, so switch it up so that you, because not all of the petals um, are the same color. So change it up so you have a little variety in your piece. So I'm constantly turning. And I'll let that dry before I put the dark, okay? But I can go ahead and I can come over here and do this one, 
darker also. And like some of them where they're just little tiny, tiny pieces, um, they may just be the light blue only. It really just depends on what you like. Now, there is, let me see if I've got, if you've got a mister, um, and that's not MR, that is a mister mister. Like, these have alcohol in them, so I'm not going to use those, but a fine mister like this. Not the pump ones. Okay, just to find this. This happens to be a little travel one. Let's see if it's going to... Uh, watch it not work on me. Of course not. It broke. Uh, let's see. Let me check what's in this one. Oh, that's got alcohol. I want to show you a trick. I think this one is water. That's what happens when you work with glass and ceramic. Okay, so find mister six inches back okay you can spray this and it will show you what it's going to look like when it's fired what glaze will you finish the piece with that sw004 cheryl is what i really really like okay here we go ready i got my mister brush or mister and i'm gonna so that's gonna show you see how it you can see that it's wet because it glistens but that's going to show you more of what it's going to look like when it's fired so it's going to pump the color up, and that's a good way to check your application of color, especially if you're doing something that doesn't have this transfer, and you're just, maybe it's a pattern I've given you or something you drew out, and you're going to do the same technique, you can. You just put your black lines on top, but you can mist it to check your application to see if you need more color. And what cone, Cheryl, it'll be a, a 2167 is what I'm going to go to. Cone 5. Would you refire again at 04? Yes. So, well, yeah. No, I would not type, tape it. Brenda's asking, would I tape it off? The problem is because the, the CCs, the color concentrates will be set, but that underglaze transfer still could come off. So I would not use painter's tape in this case. Okay. I would fire this and set it. And then I will probably come back and either be very careful or I'm going to use my um, Mr. Mark's wax on. And you want, I've got it written on my bottle, 70% wax, 30% water. And I would do like a one inch strip all the way around that center just to protect it. And then I'd have to fire that off because I couldn't put the clear over it. So it's a catch 22. I've never used, I don't know, has anybody ever used this directly on top of the color? And did okay with it. I guess I could do that. Um, I've just never done it. So I don't want to screw it up. Thank you Lucy. Will you be over glazing. Before the next fire. So. Cindy. Over glazing means. Something on top of a glaze. Over glazing would be. Um, gold. Mother of pearl because it's on top of a glaze so i will be glazing this yes with the sw004 but not over glazing i'm not going to put any gold or mother of pearl anything like that on it you could if you wanted but i'm going to use two coats brushed on with a nice soft fan brush we have uh, this is the number eight okay i use a nice white goat soft hair and put two coats on or I could maybe, if I get my celadons mixed up from Jessica, I could use one of those on here. That would be kind of cool. If I did, okay, let me, um, okay, so like this one is bisque. I've got my uh, wax on the bottom, and I've just brushed on, this was the Cerulean 151, brushed it on, and wiped it back. So I could do the same thing on the edge, but when you're coming in, with that damp sponge, you're going to have to be really, really careful. You can put a piece of cardboard to cover the center. Well, no, not when you're wiping back with a damp sponge. If I'm going to antique it like this, it won't, that won't work, Vicki. But that's a good idea if you were doing something else. Ask Jessica. Yeah, I know she uses it. Yeah, I will. I'll have to ask her. Um, or you just be very, very careful 
when you uh, put it on, you know. I was trying to see if there's something else I had here that I could show you. Um, I don't have anything small. I don't think. No, I don't. Sorry about that. You can put the pizza card where it was. Okay, so I have answered that. You love to watch me work. Well, thank you, Anne. Considering you, you do acrylics, thanks for hanging in there with me. It's, uh, you could do the same thing. Um, with my Sumi brushes. Okay, I'm going to go into that dark. I want to show you this one where it's just got the two darker colors. So see the difference in that? So make some of them different colors, meaning different combinations of those same three colors. You don't want to in introduce necessarily a whole nother, unless you were going to do one blossom um, I wanted to do purples on it, but I'm still really scared that I might lose some of it with this type of application. So we'll have to wait and see. Okay, but see the difference in that? Isn't that pretty? Shows you. You get dizzy watching me turn the piece around. Okay, then before I forget, um, then you want to come back and I'm going to grab the mini and you've got your centers on your blossoms. So I'm going to take just a little dab of the yellow and kind of tap it in the center. And you could add a little bit of green also. And I would use probably the 161. You could, and I'm just touching like the tip of my brush, kind of tap, tap. You could use the, um, you know, the little dotting tool, or you can use this guy. It's really soft, um, but I find that while I've got the color on my brush, I might as well just add it in there. Okay, I hope you can see those. All right, purple would be nice. You think I should do purple? I could do purples on these, and maybe up here. I'm just afraid it's gonna. Hmm. I don't know. I, I, I don't want to tie you guys up any longer, but is there anything else on this? Where do you get the transfers from? Gail asked. Gail, in the YouTube recording below the video, I did uh, put the link to this particular company. Um, there's other ones out there. If you just type in Google underglaze transfers, you will come up with some different companies. Okay. All right, any questions on what I've done or you need to see something again? You guys tell me what you need to see, okay? So if you're not on YouTube, um, and Gail, in case you're not familiar, here's my YouTube channel so you can search for Paula McCoy. You'll see the Colors for Earth logo, okay? The website looks like this. Okay, and then if you're a ceramics, you touch on that ceramic product but button. I need to remove that since I'm back. Um, the glass enamels, brushes, whatever. Okay, so that takes you to all of that. All right, so let's do this. So here are some different things that I've done. These are all ceramics, cone five, cone six, with the exception of that ginger jar. Um, a lot of these were um, videos also. If you're on the website, you can type in ClayShare and it will pop up anything that I've done if you're a ClayShare member. Um, there is a color stroke kit or you can buy individuals. Um, here is if you are earthenware. These are some pieces that I've done on earthenware. Uh, the butterfly bowl is a free project on my website. Everything else is... Um, the plate with the apple is called Italian Flare. So all of my, they're called class in a bags or technique sheets. And I've been trying to get them all as downloadable. If you come across one you want and you'd rather have it cheaper to download, just email me and say, hey, can you put that one up there? I don't mind doing that. It, it's just going to take time. Okay. And any of you that came in late, here's your cone five, cone six color wheels with the color concentrates and the color strokes.
We do have kits available. We've got glass kits. The CC Enhancer kit um, is all the color concentrates. You've got three different kits or you can buy the 41. We've had a lot of people this year that have bought the 41. That seems to go over. If you're a glass person, here's some examples of glass. Some of these have been YouTubes. Um, I'm coming to Florida and teaching two days of glass. If that studio has any openings, I will uh, let you know. I haven't promoted it yet because um, he thinks he can fill it by himself. So, okay. Hi there. I'm back. <laughs> All right. You're welcome, Belinda. Jackie, thank you. Thank you for hanging in there. Um, so do you fire then glaze? I am, you could, if you wanted to, Cindy is asking, can you, do you have to fire it and then glaze it? No, I could do all this. I could put my two coats of glaze over it. The key is when you're applying glaze, you don't want, I'm going to move back to the overhead. When you're using your fan brush, you load with your glaze and you go one, two, maybe three, just to smooth out any. Uh, raised bumps from excess glaze. Don't keep going like this back and forth over it because you're going to overwork what's underneath and it's going to come up. And the other thing that I do before I glaze, it doesn't matter if it's earthenware or if it is stoneware or porcelain, I'm going to mist. Let that wet look go away. See right now you've got that wet water puddle look, I call it. Once that absorbs, I glaze. Because if you've got damp and you're putting damp glaze on your brush, uh, it's not going to smear unless you overwork it. Thank you, Brenda. How did you get the texture on the edge? Okay, so this was a rolling pin. Um, this, um, it is a Sharon Hoppy design, Whirly Gigs or something like that it may be called. Isn't that pretty? It's got a lot of different uh, texture. It was also on that other one that I showed you. Where did it go? Um, I got way too many things. So oh, this one here. Ouch. Hold on. It's the same as this one here. Isn't that pretty? So I protected the center rolled. Um, you can protect it by putting like a piece of craft foam in that area and then doing the border or you can just border it with your pen itself i mean there's a couple of different ways of doing it i'm sure jessica has quite a few different videos on it you're welcome okay so somebody yeah all of the everything is on uh youtube let me go back to me or i think one of the biggest things um, i get questions on is how to find something on the website, just type in a keyword in the search bar. So if it's ClayShare related and you knew I did it on ClayShare Con, maybe last year, this year, whatever, just type in ClayShare, less is more, okay? And then hit the search bar and it'll bring up anything on that search, okay? Thanks, Kim, I appreciate that. Okay, don't forget to give, yeah, if hit the thumbs up, the like button um, on YouTube, uh, share, if you would like to do that, you are welcome. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off and uh, go eat me some dinner since I didn't do that before I started, and it's 9 o'clock. All right, yay, it worked, and I will see you next week. We're doing glass next week, okay? And I'll put that up soon so that you can have time to put it on your schedule. All right, take care.